My name is Mitchell Pearson, and I am a business intelligence consultant for Pragmatic Works. And today our webinar is going to be on SSIS performance tuning. Brad Schatt was going to be doing the webinar today, but unfortunately he had some uh, meetings that he could not get out of. So he asked me if I could uh, cover for him. And I expect that he will actually be on here later on. So if you have any questions directly for Brad, um, or if you have any questions here at the end of the meeting, he will probably jump in there and help answer the, any questions that you might have. So <clears throat> a little bit about me. Um, once again, I'm a business intelligence consultant for Pragmatic Works. I blog at mitchellsequel.wordpress.com. I have a lot of good blogs there on SSIS, and some of those are on performance tuning as well. Uh, my Twitter handle is mitchellsequel, and you can also contact me here at Pragmatic Works on my email, and my email is elmpearson at pragmaticworks.com. Uh, as far as the SQL Server community goes, I'm pretty active in the community. I've spoken at many SQL Saturday events uh, here in Florida as well as the local SQL Server user group. So we have a SQL Server user group here in town, the Jacksonville SQL Server user group, and I've spoken there as well, and I believe I've been a member there for uh, about two years now. All right, so let's talk about the agenda today and what we're going to be covering. The first thing I'm going to go over is I'm going to talk a little bit about best practices when creating your SSIS packages, and then we're going to transition into blocking versus non-blocking transforms, uh, sometimes you're going to have to use blocking transforms in SSIS, but we're going to discuss how to mitigate those issues when you don't have to use blocking transforms. And we'll discuss a little bit about why blocking transforms inside of SSIS are not good for performance. And then finally at the end, I'm going to cover a couple examples of real life performance problems that I've ran into out there in the field and some of the solutions uh, that I was able to implement in order to improve performance inside of SSIS. So I'm going to jump into SSIS here, and I have a solution here that I've created for today's presentation. And the first thing I want to talk about is using select star or selecting table or view from your source or your lookup component inside of SSIS. So if I open up this data flow here and then I open up the old DB source component, you can see that in this demonstration here I've selected table or view, and I've selected my DIM employee table. Now what that's going to do is it's going to bring in all of the columns from the DIM employee table and it's going to pass those through my data flow whether I need those columns or not, <clears throat> which means it's going to have to drag all that information across the network, it's going to have to pass all of that information into buffers inside of data flow, and then it's going to have to process all of that information. That can be extremely heavy. Um, on performance and degrading to the performance that you're going to receive. So I've created a very basic uh, demonstration here to show you the difference as far as the performance you should expect if you're going to select a table or a view and the performance that you will get if you actually select only the columns that you need to pull back from the source component. So if I run this package here and let me go ahead and give you an idea of what's inside of that table there. So this table has probably somewhere around 20 columns of varying length in data types, all right? And if I go ahead and run this package here, <clears throat> or just this data flow, it's going to run pretty quick, all right? It's a small dimension. I think I only have about 500,000 records in here. Um, and I'm going to flip over to the progress tab. That should complete here in just a second, all right? 501,000 records. And that completed in 12 seconds. So not too bad, right? Now, I still caution you that this is everything that I'm doing here is local. It's on my local machine. I have an SSD. I have a pretty, pretty nice computer here. Um, but this is a small dimension, or this is a small record set. So you've got to be very careful because as you complicate your process and add networking issues and other things inside of your environment, it could perform much worse. Now, if I flip over to my other data flow here, select two columns, and I open that up, I'm going to show you what I got. So instead of bringing back 20 columns, which is what you saw in the other table here, or the other data flow, I'm only going to bring back the two that I need, right? So I'm just going to bring back the surrogate key here and the business key. And if I go to columns, you can see that that's all I've selected. So I'm going to stop processing the other one, <clears throat> and I'm going to go ahead and execute this package here. And visually, you can see, before I even flip over to the progress tab, visually you can see, hey, there is a significant improvement here, right? So if I flip over here, you can see that this ran in about 0.8 seconds, not even one second. The other one that we ran just seconds ago took 12 seconds to run. It took 12 seconds to execute. So there is a huge impact to performance if you select only the columns that you need. 
I don't see as many clients doing their select and then table or review in the source as much as I used to. And I saw from the survey that we did just a moment ago that a lot of people do not consider themselves even beginners anymore. We have a lot of intermediate level SSIS developers on the call today. What I do see though is I see the table or view or the select star being used in lookup components. A lot of times in SSIS packages because of course that's quicker for development and that's easier to do. The problem with that is you need to understand that 99% of the time if you're performing a lookup inside of SSIS, and I'm opening up a new package here, 99% of the time if you're performing a lookup inside of SSIS, you're going to use this full cache mode here, right? And the full cache mode is going to put everything into memory. So if you're pulling back a larger data set than what's required, you're going to be consuming a lot more SQL Server memory than you need to require or that, that is required. And that can definitely hurt not only the package that's running, but other packages that are running at the same time. So to demonstrate this without even setting this up in a package, <clears throat> I've created two separate tables right here inside of my Object Explorer. And let me zoom in. Hopefully everybody can see my screen okay. And if you can't see my screen, just say something in the chat window down there and Liz will let me know and I'll, I'll definitely use my Zoom tool a lot more here. But I have my DIM employee table that I just showed you a minute ago, and that has probably 20 or 30 columns here. And then I have my DIM employee two, two columns here, and it's only got the two columns that I require. So imagine here that I run a select statement that is only going to bring back the two columns. And in this other one, I'm doing a table or view, right? Which you'll see, and I'm just going to use space used on these two tables here. And let me bring this information together. All right. What you're going to see here is that the first one that's doing a select star or bringing back the entire table is actually going to cache about 343 megs of data into memory. The one that's only bringing back the two columns that's required for that lookup or even in the old DB source, it's only going to cache about 13 megs. So up here you got about 343 megs, right? And I'll go ahead and write that out. And down below you're only going to be caching about 12 megs. Now you can think about that in terms of SSIS packages that you have in your environment and some of those packages probably have 10, 15, 20 lookup components inside of them and it's doing this for every one of those lookup components. It's taking way more data than it needs to and it's caching that into memory. 